Today is day two of our trip in Vegas. I said it coming into this trip, I'm not catching an L. We are allergic to those. We head to the win in search for a win. Sorry, I had to do, I had to, I didn't have a choice. We hop on the waitlist for 2-5 and get seated within a few minutes. We buy the game for $1,500, which is the max. We get into some spots relatively quickly. Early on in the session, we pick up pocket eights in the hijack. Under the gun and the low jack limp. I raise it up to $25 and the button calls. Action gets back to the under the gun player who decides to limp three bet to $105. I've seen this play so often with aces or kings that I'm almost inclined to believe that he has one of those too. However, this player has $1,300 behind. We're getting a pretty good price to set mine. If we do happen to hit a set, I think a lot of money could be going in the middle. Plus, we're in position against this player. For those two reasons, I stick the money in the middle, and the button does as well. So three musketeers are heading off to a flop, which comes... 10-7 deuce. Under the gun, C bets $80. He could have two overcards like Ace King or Ace Queen, and according to my calculations, I'm still ahead of those. I stick in the money, and the button comes along as well. We're still going three ways to a turn card, which comes the Jack of Spades. Under the gun now slows down and checks. If you're me, what do you do in this situation? If your answer is anything other than check, you're a maniac. We have third pair. Let's just get to showdown. I check it over to the button, and he only has around $300 behind, so I'm thinking it's an easy jam spot after seeing both players check to him, but I'm pleasantly surprised as he checks it back. We're still going three ways to a river, which comes the six of diamonds. Now, under the gun bets $375 with $875 behind. Oh my god, I think I might have to go broke here. If you're asking why, I can have a lot of strong holdings here. And this board is really scary for aces or kings, which I think under the gun could credibly have, and that's what I'm putting him on. I think betting here with aces or kings is a mistake because if they face a raise, well, now you're gonna throw up on the felt and fold because you're losing to a lot. I could have 8-9 suited, which I double block. I could have pocket 7s, pocket 6s. I could even have pocket jacks and 10s. Or I could have two pair, like 7-6. There's just a lot of holdings that aces and kings lose to. That would have to fold to a raise. And for that exact reason, I might have to go broke here. Button was a straightforward passive player. If he had any strong holding, I promise you the money was going in on this turn card. So him checking back eliminates all worry that he has anything strong on this board. It's so early on in the session, I'm thinking, do I really want to bluff off my entire stack? First and foremost, I think it's the right play. And secondly, I didn't fly all the way across the country to play like a bitch. So... I put my big boy pants on and go all in. I hone in on a singular card and pray to God that he folds his cards. We don't even have a sweat in this instance, as under the gun mucks his cards and says, you got it. Let's go. This one gets through. My heart is on fire. We're starting the session on the right foot. Stack is upwards of $2,000 right off rip. The very next shuffle, we look down at King Queen offsuit in the big blind. Under gun one raises to $15. The button calls and action's on me. Maybe three months ago, I would have three bet this hand because ooga booga, two face cards, pretty. But we're out of position and we're also dominated by hands like ace king and ace queen. The raise came from early position, which means he's going to have a tighter range. So with all that being said, I'm just going to call here. The flop comes above average. <laughs> it's king, queen, deuce. I check it, playing in flow, and under the gun one, C bets $15. Button makes the call. There are infinite amount of draws on this board, like the obvious flush draw, jack 10, even ace jack that has a gut shot. I want to pump as much money into the middle as this casino will let me. 
So I tune it up to an amount of $80. Neither of them want the smoke, and they wisely fold. Here we have an interesting spot with Ace-10 of clubs under the gun. I raised up to $15. No less than four people call. So we're going heads up to a flop, which comes 10-3-2. Big blind checks it over to me. I decide to check as well. This is a spot where we're probably either way ahead or way behind. There's not many turn cards I fear, and I'd also rather check call rather than bet, face a raise, and then what do we do? It also gives us the opportunity to see what our opponents do behind us, which is valuable information. I check it, and action checks around. The turn brings a really interesting card in the four of clubs. Big Blind now leads for $50. I now have a flush draw, a gut shot to a wheel, and I still have top pair. I don't think a raise accomplishes much. A fold is out of the question, which leaves a singular option, that is to call. The button also comes along, so we're going three ways to a river, which comes the Queen of Diamonds. Big Blind now slows down and checks. Again, I think this is another situation where I have plenty of showdown value, don't really need to bloat up a pot here. Plus, if I bet, then face a raise from either the button or a check raise from the big blind, well, now I just have to fold. Whereas, if I check and the button bets, I think we can call a reasonable amount of the time. So, I check it over to him, button quickly checks it back. We show, and we win. Really nice to take this one down. I really like my check on the flop. Even three months ago, I would have said, Ooga booga, top hair, top kicker, duh. And I would have let out. That's not necessarily the best play because one, it's unbalanced. What else am I leading there? And number two, we have the entire state of Kentucky left to act behind us. Better as a check call. Love it. Let's move on. Since that pocket pair worked so well, let's try one more. This time, pocket fives from the cutoff. Under the gun raises to $15, and the hijack three bets to 45 the hijack has around $1,300 behind. We're in position of both of these players, and if we hit a set, I think there's a high probability that we get paid. So I decide to make the call, but under the gun folds, which is a little bit weird. So we're going heads up in a three bet pot versus the hijack. Flop is above average. It's queen five deuce with two clubs. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. The hijack C bets $35. Since there are multiple possible draws on board, I think this is a great opportunity to raise. I throw in a raise to $135, and the hijack makes the call. The turn is not so great. It's the four of clubs, and the hijack checks to me. Well, that's unfortunate. The board has the queen of clubs, so we really only have to be worried about ace king of clubs and maybe ace-jack of clubs. Other than that, it's very unlikely that the opponent has a made flush here. I think it's more likely that the opponent has aces with the ace of clubs, kings with the king of clubs, or ace-queen with the ace of clubs. All of those hands we're still very, very far ahead of, and we can get value from. I bet $225 into a pot of 375. The hijack thinks for a while. I could have done my taxes, taken a doo-doo, and still made it back to the table before this guy acted. After a long contemplation, the hijack decides to call. The river is the seven of clubs. Okay, that's not good. Hijack checks once more, and there's nothing for us to do here except check it back. Hijack shows ace-queen offsuit with the ace of clubs. An absolute dream flop that progressed into a nightmare. On the bright side, I'm really happy with how I played this hand. By the way, we were a 93% favorite on the flop, and even an 80% favorite on the turn. Just dog water variance there. I can't control that. What I can control is my play. Very happy with how he played this. Here we have eight seven of spades in the big blind. The low jack limps, and the straddle is on. I raised up to $40, and only the limper calls. Flop comes king, seven, deuce with two clubs. We flop ourselves second pair, and we're out of position, so I check it to see how the low jack acts. The low jack fires $60, which is on the larger size. My immediate thought is how many kings does the low jack have here? 
I block sets of sevens. I think it's highly probable that he's on a flush draw, which we're still ahead of. So I decide to peel one and see how he acts on the turn. Unfortunate for us, the turn is the ace of hearts. Ugh. I check, low jack bets 150, and now all of the hands that we were ahead of on the flop we're now losing to, so I just fold. A few hands later, we look down at another premium in pocket jacks. I raise the $15, small blind calls, and we go heads up to a flop of ace, ace, eight. Ouch. Small blind checks. I don't think we're getting value from worse on this flop, so I check it back. The turn is a king. That's great. Action goes check, check once again. River is irrelevant. Small blind checks again. I place a hefty value bet of $10 and he folds. GTO wizardry. What a freaking play. This next spot, we get ourselves in a bit of trouble. Uh, I'm quite curious to see what you guys would do here. We're in the small blind with pocket eights. The cutoff raises to $15. And since we're out of position, I go 4x to 60. The big blind doesn't think that's enough. He four bets to $180 with 1300 left behind. Cutoff folds and action's back on me. At first glance, I thought this was an easy fold because we're out of position facing a four bet. That's pretty strong. A lot of the times we're going to be dominated by hands like jacks, maybe queens, kings, and aces, but then I started to think for a little bit. For whatever reason, a voice inside me whispered, Ace King. <laughs> I got a strong hunch that he was on Ace King, which we're still doing perfectly fine against. We're also super deep, which means if I hit a set, probably going to get paid. I wouldn't necessarily advise this, but... I put in a speculative call. We go heads up to a flop of 10-7 deuce. I check it over, and the big blind C bets $75. I expect him to do this with his entire range, including hands that were still ahead of, like ace-king. So I call. The turn brings no help. It's a four. I check it once again, and this time the big blind sizes up to $315. Okay. This sizing set up a perfect all-in jam on the river. It's decision point. If we call here, we are basically committing ourselves to call off on any brick river. Do we really want to do that with pocket eights? I began to think, and I was like, pocket eights are basically the same thing as jacks here. Either way, we still lose the queens, kings, and aces. If I would call off with jacks here, shouldn't I call off with eights? Uh, I don't know. This is my first interaction with this guy. He had just sat down 10 minutes ago, and there had been no previous four bets at this table in like three or four hours. I think there will be better spots. I decide to let this one go. The big blind was nice enough to tell us later that he had ace-king offsuit. I was close to calling you. I promise. I was, I was thinking about it. But, hey, you got it through. Nice hand, big guy. Next interesting spot of note, we have pocket jacks under the gun. I open to $15, and the player to my immediate left three bets to 45. This guy was a three bet Andy. If he was a pilot on an aircraft that had three buttons labeled three bet call fold, the middle button was broken, non-functional, didn't exist. He did not have a call button. He three bet me a number of times within the past 30-ish minutes. This is the opponent that bluffed me with ace-king when we had pocket eights, so I'm less inclined to continue giving him so much credit. The low jack cold calls. This might seem intimidating, but the low jack is a passive old guy. He was 97, could give less of a rat's ass about money. If he had any two decent cards, he's in there. No problem. Low jack only has around $300 behind. Action folds back to me, and I actually contemplate a 4-bet here because I think I could fold out under the gun 1 and maybe Lojack will just commit his stack and call? Then I think better of it. I'm under the gun, which means I should theoretically have the tightest range at the table, and plus one 3-bet that tight range, meaning he should have an even tighter range. So in this case, I should actually give him credit. I decide to make the call 
and we go three ways out of position to a flop of 10-3-2 with two clubs. I check playing in flow, and the three better C bets $40. Then the low jack calls. I think under the gun one has absolutely nothing. When he bets here, I expect him to do it with 100% of his range. But when the low jack calls, I think he has something. And the most probable thing that the low jack has is either top pair or a flush draw. Against both of those holdings, I'd rather get the money in now because there will be a lot of turn cards that could either one, kill action, or two, completely wreck our world. We also have an overpair that could use some protection because if any ace, king, or queen comes out on the turn, I'm going to hate myself. I think if I put in a raise here, under the gun one will fold, and low jack will just jam it all in, and we can go heads up to a run out. That's the plan. I check raise to $210. Under the gun one folds, and low jack makes the call with $71 behind. The turn comes the king of diamonds which is, albeit not a great card, but with SPR so low, I'm just never folding here. I go all in, the low jack calls, and the river's the nine of spades. So if he had 10-9, now he gets there. I don't know. I show, and the low jack shows ace three of clubs for a pair and a flush draw on the flop. What a monster flop for both of us. Glad that our hand held up. We take this one down. A little bit of time passes before we pick up a real premium in pocket aces in the cutoff. That's what I'm talking about. I open the $15 and the button and small blind call. Flop comes 974 with two clubs. I C bet $25 and only the button calls. The turn is a complete brick. It's the two of hearts. If we're ahead on the flop, then on this turn card, it means we're probably still ahead. And if we bet on the flop, well, I think you know what we do here. I size up to $80, and this time, the button lets his cards go. Here we have 6-5 on the button. Under the gun, one makes it $15. I call, and both the blinds come along as well. Flop comes king 7-5 rainbow. The preflop razor continues for $35. Well, we have third pair, but there are a lot of turn cards that can improve our hand dramatically. We have a backdoor flush draw, which would be super disguised, and if any four or eight come, then we turn an open-ended straight draw. Also, a five or a six would give us two pair of trips. A lot of turn cards that can help us. I decide to peel one, but the turn is the queen of diamonds. Under the gun one continues for $85. This time, I just let my cards go. Next hand of note, we have 10 eight of hearts in the small blind. Two limps to me. This was a very limp happy table, by the way. It went on literally every single hand. So I raised it up to $20, which is a little bit too loose, but whatever. Only the low jack limper calls. The flop comes queen, seven, deuce, all hearts. We flop a flush and the low jack folds before I even act. I was going to check it. Why'd you fold? Oh no. The low jack owns our soul. What a soul read. No, I'm kidding. He had absolutely nothing, but it <laughs> still sucks to flop a flush and get no action. Didn't even check or bet. Just got wrecked. Here's our final hand of the night. We have 9-8 of clubs in the cutoff. I raise it up to $15. The small blind three bets to $40. And then the big blind cold calls. Wow, okay. Since we're in position of both of these players, and we have a very playable hand post-flop, I decide to make the call. We go three ways to a flop, which comes pretty magical. 7-6-3 with two clubs and a diamond. We flop ourselves a flush draw and an open-ended straight draw. Equity is pouring out the seams. Action checks to me, and we are quite deep. I want to start getting money in the middle. I start with a half pot size bet of $60 and the small blind calls. Then the big blind check raises to $225 with $1,100 behind. Okay. I think a pocket pair that hit a set on the flop is the most probable case here because the small blind three bet us 
and the big blind cold called. Then check raised the flop. So I'm thinking sevens, sixes, or threes. With that being said, we're actually not that much of a favorite against the set. So I decide to proceed with caution and just make the call. The small blind ends up folding. We go heads up to a turn card, which comes the three of diamonds, pairing the board. Ouch. Big blind continues for $325. If he is on a set, well, now we're drawing dead. And even if we hit one of our many outs, it doesn't matter because we're still behind. I just decide to trust my intuition and let this one go. I'm not a fan of chasing flushes or straights on a paired board because it's very easy to be drawing dead. As crazy as it sounds, I think a check back on the flop allows us to realize our equity for much cheaper, and it eliminates the possibility I don't I don't know whatever I I don't hate my bet on the flop I can't be result oriented like that I think getting check raised in the flop gave us a lot of information and maybe helped us lose the minimum all right that's pretty much it for this episode we were in the game for 1500 out for 1814 for the profit of 314 over five hours not horrible not great but a win is a win thank you so much for watching Please subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed. Share this with someone who might enjoy a vlog. Till next time, see ya.